shot by McCormick is down in front. Come on, Ronnie, score! Harvard wins the national championship! So, on to the national championship game. But before that, you know, we were really lucky in that um, Coach Tomasoni, um, having Virginia, Minnesota, or Avalith, Minnesota roots, uh, was a strong recruiter out in Minnesota. And so back then, right, you had a day in between the semifinals and the national championship. One of the things was in between Lane, you were awarded the Hobie Baker, but um, Todd Harchie's parents, you know, hosted us uh, for, you know, a meal that in between days. And um, that was a really great, I think, experience and bringing us together and giving us a little bit of home cooking. But maybe one of you guys could just take that and talk a little bit about um, how that created a family environment and gave us a chance to just kind of relax for a day. Hey, hey Chuck, listen, I, I think it was, it was so many moments along the year kind of, you know, were important to us. And that was just a nice, almost respite from the grind of being in a hotel, the usual kind of meals and just getting away. And guys were just hanging out, right? And just having fun. I remember guys throwing the football around outside, um, having a nice meal at the Hearts. These are wonderful folks. And it was just one of, it's just a very simple day of let's get away from this for a little bit. We got a day off, let's enjoy it, get away, recharge, hang on his team. And you know, there's one game left. And so it was kind of the perfect getaway, you know, for us as we prepared for that final game. And that night, we were gonna be able to watch the other semifinal game because that was on, you know, the off night. So we played, on I think Friday, you know, I kind of remember Thursday, then other semis Friday, and then then the final Saturday. But it was a perfect way to kind of spend that day, and we had a lot of fun, right? It was just lots of laughs and just a good time to be together, away from the rink and away from the hotel. Right, and it was great for these guys too because their family, right, was you know located in you know Minnesota. Scotty Farden from Virginia, and you know Todd Archie from Anoka, and Mike Vukanich you know, from Duluth. And so like, we just had, you know, some great guys from that state too. And going into the final, of course, they were gonna get to play in front of their home crowd, like Teddy and Eddie and I got to do in the Boston Garden. Um, here we go entering, you know, playing the Minnesota Golden Gophers, a storied franchise and the St. Paul Civic Center with 15,500 fans and 15,000 of them are cheering for, um, you know, Minnesota. You know, Eddie, you know, you had been in the finals before. Was that, did that feel any different to you? Did it feel, you know, more, uh, you know, stressful in such a hostile environment? Like, tell me what was going through your mind heading into that game. I don't know about stressful, but more exciting. I mean, I, I think the venue was really electric, right? I mean, don't forget, not only were, were they such a great team and, and such a, um, they're like a pro team. In Minnesota, they're, they're all Minnesota kids, right? Every one of them was from the state of Minnesota. So, um, you know, they, they had a little parade downtown. The, the, the Minnesota band marched through the streets of downtown St. Paul into the center. I mean, it was a pretty fun environment, right? And, uh, you know, of course, I remember the glass boards. It, it, it's the only rink in America that had glass boards, right? Which was kind of cool. Um, but we knew it was going to be a great game, right? I mean, the stage was that the two teams that probably were supposed to be there were there. And uh, what happened over the next 60 minutes, who knows? But it, it was probably as close to the game as people were hoping for. It was every bit as fast and physical and competitive as people hoped it would be. Um, you know, it was sort of everything that we were looking forward to all year long. Um, and again, we knew that we, we weren't, we weren't going to lose. This. this was our year. We just felt like for whatever reason, this, this is our time to steal a, uh, a, a quote from Herb Brook, right? That, that was our season. We were going to win. Let's walk through a few of the plays. And I guess the first one, you know, is to start down one, nothing, um, against Minnesota. And what I will freely admit was a crappy goal through my legs and I should have had it and, you know. That's okay, because we'll get to the one that I was going to get. Um, but I'm curious, guys, on the bench, Edzo, um, we go down about six minutes into the game. Minnesota's going crazy. What, I'm a nice, so I have no clue. Like, what's it like on the bench? What's coach saying? What's the, what's the feeling on the team? 
Well, first of all, it was incredibly loud. You know, the, the rink went crazy and they have this Minnesota cheer where they go around the rink and they spell out Minnesota and all that sort of stuff. Um, but we didn't panic. I mean, it's a long game. Um, so we just stayed focused, um, stay on point. Let's not get distracted. There's a lot of hockey left. Um, so we, you know, we didn't get down on ourselves. Let's put it that way. Yeah. When we got out of the period, you know, down one, nothing, and we get, you know, to regroup and come out. And I think we came back energized and, and Teddy, um, I still remember that first goal. I mean, I remember both goals, but that first goal is just, it's such a, you know, I think prototypical, you know, type of goal that our team scored on the power play, Donato from McDonald and Bora Bow, and you just absolutely shot a pill glove high on Stauber. Can you just walk us through like what you saw as that play developed? Well, I think uh, if I remember correctly, Lane carried it into the zone, um, you know, and kind of took a lot of, you know, um, pressure, you know, and, and, and a lot of attention, it, you know, went back to Albie and he slid it over to me and I had a little bit of room to step in, um, you know, and, you know, I was just thinking, you know, Star Starber was, you know, he was the guy, you know, so you, you, you weren't going to, you weren't going to try to, you know, um, you know, finesse one by him, you know, so I, I, I tried to step into it and shoot it as hard as I could. And, you know, I, you know, I always love to shoot, you know, glove high Chucky when I had a chance back then. So, um, but you know what, you know, when, when Eddie was saying, you know, when you guys are talking about when the score was one to nothing, the, the one thing I thought about that game where I, I felt like, I felt like we always were going to have a chance because, you know, it was, it was, it was our style. And I think Minnesota kind of played the same style. They played hockey. They get up and down. They made plays, you know. Um, and and so for us, to me, I, you know, I, I I thought, hey, we we win these kind of games. When you want to go up and down and play, you know, play hockey and play fast. And I think that's why the game was so exciting. But, uh, yeah, I, I would love to say that I thought all that much. But I, I picked my head up, saw it, and shot it. And, you know, luckily it went in. Hey, he shot that hockey. I, if I may, just one, one thing about that. So – Al makes a pass over to Teddy. Teddy's walking in. I'm then looping around kind of back towards behind the net. And so I couldn't have had a better angle and the whole thing because Teddy's stepping and ripping it. And I was so thrilled that it went in the net, which was number one. I was also thrilled he didn't shoot high because it may have taken my head off, right? <laughs> Teddy didn't shoot the puck so hard. But it was, it was kind of one of those where I had such a great angle and Teddy just ripped it, right? In that moment, it's kind of like those key moments in games where – you, you just need good things to happen, right? We had started to come back, right? But we needed something good to happen. And as Teddy did so often, right? He stepped up in that big moment and delivered, right? And that we needed that goal to, to get going, but it was a great shot in a great situation. Right, it was, it was, and I like your point, Teddy, and that's really hockey. Like you don't think, you just see it and you react and you made a hockey play and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful goal. Um, later that period in the second period, what, four minutes later, Lane, um, you score what is just a picturesque thing of beauty. And I wonder, like, as a goalie, like, I want to hear from you. Like, you get that puck, and you're able to pick up speed. Can you just walk us through that play as you're bearing down all alone on Sauber? Like, could you take us through that? Gosh, I, you know, I mean, sort of a play in neutral zone, and sort of the puck just kind of came to me, and I was looping. So as everyone knows plays hockey, when you're crossing over, you're sort of picking up speed. So I was starting to pick up speed, and then all of a sudden the puck was there. And then I felt like I have a bit of an angle on the D as he's sort of trying to, you know, sort of regroup back. So then all of a sudden you know you got the D, but then you got Rob Stauber, who's a great goalie there. And at that point, you know, as a forward, right, particularly, it's sort of like things go a little bit blank, which is I want to get to the far side and get this to the net before he can react to it, right? And if you look at that, which I hadn't for a long time, but we watched last year, Rob reacted pretty darn quickly. And so mm -hmm. there was some room wide, but he got his glove stick down pretty quickly. So at that point, it was really one of make the move, right? Beat him wide and, and shoot as quickly as you can and get it in the net. But it was certainly one of like right place, right time. And then also just kind of that sense of, you know, gosh, I'm you're just so happy that we're kind of scored another goal, right? And we're in a good position in the game. And so, you know, it, it's, it is those moments, I think, as Teddy and Edzo and you have all said, 
Like it's sharing it with your teammate, teammates, right? It's not what you did, but like now all of a sudden you could celebrate with your buddies and you're one step closer to get into the promised land, right? You know, let's just keep going here. We got one more, let's get one, let's get another one. So it was just, you know, good situation, right time and against a really good goalie. So I, I clearly felt lucky to, to beat Rob in, in that case, but he didn't have a lot of help there, right? He had nothing in terms of support in that goal. Right. And then, you know, it only lasted, that lead was short lived. You go up two to one and, you know, three minutes later, Minnesota goes on a power play. And so, you know, in the seven goals that were scored, you know, there are three power play goals. We get one, they get two. And when you say, like you were saying, Lane, such, you know, vaunted offensive players that, you know, Jason Miller from Chorsky and Pitlick, like, boom, all of a sudden it's tied up and we go into the third period. And I think this really tested the medal of our team and, you know, the, in the third period with about eight minutes left to go, Ted, um, you know, you score a beautiful backhander over a sprawled out, you know, stopper. And I know that we've joked because Vuk had at least one or two chances right before that to probably get the goal. And, uh, you know, it turns out that, you know, you're able to, to, to bury it and finish it, but that was a mad scramble. Take us through that goal too, Ted, because that's a pretty exciting play. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Vuk, Vuk actually played great in the game. He had a ton of chances. And, uh, you know, uh, if, if you remember, that's, you know, uh, Rob Stauber was a high school teammate of Vuk, right? So, you know, there was, there was, there was definitely some added pressure on the Minnesota guys. You know, they, they, you know, they had, you know, come out east and, and now they're playing against the University of Minnesota. And, uh, you know, it was, I thought Vuk was a men's all game and, and uh, he was great and, um, I, I don't remember the whole goal, um, you know, the sequence that led to it, but I know that, you know, um, John Murphy, you know, had made several good plays on the night. Um, so did Mike Vukinich. And, um, I just remember the puck kind of being available on a rebound. It kind of came to my backhand and, um, you know, just knowing Stauber, you know, like you had to kind of, you kind of had to finish the play. You weren't going to just chipping into an empty net. So I tried to go up with it and, you know, was able to, to get it in up top. So that was, uh, that was exciting, but I, I have, I have to say the, uh, for as much as, um, you know, I, I might've been, uh, overconfident, uh, against Boston college earlier in the season when guys came to me, I, I said, you know, right after we scored, I, you know, I said, this is not over, you know, let's, let's finish it. You know, this is, you know, we got a long way to go. And that one's on record, too, because if you can turn up the volume, if you're watching a replay of the game, you can distinctly hear you saying this isn't over as the team is, you know, the five guys on the line are celebrating with you. And, you know, sure enough, um, you know, late in the game with with under four minutes to go, Minnesota goes up on a power play. And I remember this one because I really feel like, you know, while I said I wasn't going to let the overtime post off of Randy Scarta go in, that that one I remember because I remember, you know, Tommy Peterson, you know, giving it to Peter Hankinson on a one timer and that ice was soft, right? It was, it was the spring. It was not conducive to two fast teams and it was still an exciting and fast game, but the ice was sloppy and, and chippy and Hankinson kind of like hit it on the top of a stick and it fluttered. And that sort of threw me off and you kind of look, you see me falling forward as if I were shot because I was trying to make the glove save and, and it was, you know, up there. And, you know, that was really, I was really mad at myself for that one because I thought I could have stopped that one and maybe kept the game uh, from going into overtime, but it is what it is. The place is going crazy. You know, we're all in there, um, you know, tense. So, so, hey, hey, Chuck, Chuck, listen, if I may chime in, and I think it was a testament to our whole team, you know, in terms of how everybody viewed it just as you did, right? You took responsibility for that more so than you should have. It's a power play one timer, right? There's nothing you could do. You made so many great saves throughout that whole game. But I think that was kind of a testament to our whole team about the philosophy of everyone was wanted to was willing to accept more blame than they should have for situations and wanted less credit. And I always think that's a sign of a great leader. And I think we were just a team built of those type of individuals who were willing to accept, right, kind of more blame. If, if a mistake was made, it wasn't someone else. It was me. What could I have done? Just as you said there. But you made so many great saves throughout that game, right? Uh, you know, well, throughout the game, but then in overtime. And that was one where one time or power play, there just wasn't much to do, right? And, but we just needed to get back to work after that one went in. You know who so, uh, was you know who was ready to take the blame for that it was John Weisbrot. 
you Chuck, here you are saying yeah. I should have had that one. Wise Broad, I remember him telling me this. Um, had the game ended differently, he said, I would have been the GOAT. I'm the one that got the penalty. I'm the one that gave them the power play and they tied it up. Of course, that never happened, but for the record, he did say that. Right, which, and I think just the character of our team, 